and still be smoking and still be doing this stuff that is telltale signs of the world. That's what pastor don't want you to do. If you don't answer the phone, eh, okay. All right. But I don't, I ain't gonna say I don't care, but I don't because to me that's, that's so little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you're gonna get to a point where you say, you know what? It ain't that serious. What's up? Let me get the phone. And then they got this great concoction out there now called the pause button. Yeah, okay. All right. Just pause it. <laughs> First lady asks me questions all the time while the steel is on. Pause. What are you saying? <laughs> oh, no. All right. Unpause. <laughs> you know, First lady says, uh, can you come, uh, you know, turn the light out or something? Pause. Go. I'm going to complain when I get down there. I'm going to do it. I'm going to come back. Unpause. He's a pause button. It's a miracle. Hey, Amen. He must have been saved. I'm creating the pause button. Okay. They really don't go together. The pause button don't go together? Right. Oh. They don't, they don't go together. They don't, they don't match. Mm. You, you know, you, you got to fix it with you somewhere down the line. But it don't match. If you, if you on your walk, yeah, and you should be able to walk and not be ashamed. Mm -hmm. But if you if you run for somewhere to hide, the reason you hide is because you, uh, like, you know, the the beneath the guy will have you. Will have you be? So we just need to come up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we need to come up. Yeah, amen. We're gonna come up. Amen. All right. Now we said we got to be sober. That faithful, I'm in verse 11, still 1 Timothy chapter 3, faithful in all things. Then he says, let the deacons be husbands of one wife. Mm -hmm. My God. Mm -hmm. Ruling, <laughs> my word, uh, <laughs> ruling their children and their own houses well. For they that have used the office of a deacon well purchase to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. Now, I always looked at that because that was how I started with as a deacon. And I looked at it and I, I got excited because this is what uh, Mr. Black gives me a boldness in my teaching and preaching. Because by God's grace, I know that I use that office well. So when I used that, that office for uh, six and a half years uh, that I served as a deacon, because I did what the scripture said to the best of my ability and using that office well, it purchased me. It bought me boldness. Wow. So that means when I stand up and, and I got to go to the prison and preach to folk that's got stone face, uh, that's got tattoos coming out their eyes and uh, their whole face is tattooed and they're looking crazy like they want to stab me. It gives me boldness yeah. because I purchased the office of the deacon with. So it makes it real easy to pass the church. So way. you can get whatever look you want to get. Because the truth of the matter is, I got boldness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Because I used in there. <laughs> my starting point yes, well. well. That's good. Wow. Purchased. I, I didn't, I did I bought it. I, I, didn't, I didn't waste my time as a deacon by saying that calling is beneath me. Because I knew that where I am now and where I'm going is what I was really called to do. But before I could get here, I had to be proven here. Yes, sir. Entry level. I got to get in there first. And then God will move me. Now, uh, Pastor Hinton, just my, 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 my trial or my, my trail, if you will, uh, going up the ladder in ministry. Uh, I never, I never operated as a minister. Never. I went from a deacon to an elder. That was just all God. So... It was, it was that while I was in this capacity yeah. as a deacon, yes, sir. Uh, there were things that were being proven in me that could cause me to be entrusted Elevated. to go from a place of being able to now in the dark. Mm. Yes, sir. But I had to stay in the ableness and be subject to my authority while I was only able. Mm -hmm. Not executing authority that I didn't have because all I was was able. Wow. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Um, <laughs> uh, Titus, Titus, I don't know. I, maybe I need to do a, um, I feel like I need to do somebody's ordination or something. Um, <laughs> Titus, <laughs> Titus chapter one. Just, just one verse here in Titus chapter one. He's trying to teach us about a building authority, and I'm going to go to number 16. Titus chapter one, uh, the one verse I'm going to give you is verse number five. Titus chapter one, verse number five. Um, Titus chapter 1 verse number 5 and the scripture says this uh, Paul is talking he says for this cause left I thee in Crete 
that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting and ordain elders in every city as I had appointed or commanded thee. So when we're looking there uh, at that word to speak about um, ordaining, it's aligning itself with authority. Um, it's a Greek word, kathistami, uh, kathistami. Uh, kathistami is K-A-T-H-I-S-T-E-M-I. Kathistami. Kathistami. K-A-T-H-I-S. T-E-M-I, kathistami, a Greek word which means to appoint, to ordain, or to set in place. To appoint, to ordain, or to set in place. It's specifically speaking of being placed in charge of something or someone. Kathis Tamey. Kathis Tamey. To appoint, to ordain, to set in place. Particularly to be in place or in charge of something or someone. So, Pastor said earlier that the order of the house, or that the, the progression, if you will, is that you have, you know, deacons, that, that's great, we, we have those. Uh, you have licensed ministers, those that have the ability to operate or to permit, uh, they're permitted to operate in ministry. You have ordained ministers. Now, uh, the difference between a licensed and an ordained minister, okay? A licensed minister has the ability to um, assist with communion. You know, they can do all these great things in-house under the guidance of one that is in, in place or established as um, either a minister or an elder. Uh, he's permitted, they're permitted to do things in the church under guidance and supervision. Okay, an ordained minister, okay, can do everything a licensed minister can do, but an ordained minister can marry people, they can bury folk, because they've been proven as a minister. I can't let somebody that's only licensed marry somebody because what power do you have right. to vest them? That's right. Mm. When you marry somebody, they say, by the power vested in me, I declare you man and wife. That's well, if power. you've never been given any power, any authority, what are you declaring the man and wife on? Mm -hmm. <laughs> on the standards of your license? Mm -hmm. Not in Bethlehem Temple Faith Church, you're not. Ordained, mm -hmm. meaning they've been proven, they've been set in place, they can be trusted. That means the pastor ain't here. I should be able to trust any ordained minister to flow and to follow the order of the service. I don't expect just a licensed minister to be able to do that. They haven't been proven yet. They've got the ability, but they don't have the authority. So when all these folk come in and they telling me they minister this and uh, uh, pastor this and, and prophet this, amen, but you're going to do it in a licensed capacity until pastor sees that he can authorize you without you messing up the church. I'm not going to authorize you for you to create your own church. Man, y'all really think you got two pastors. <laughs> you call him Brother Joan, why you call him Brother Pastor? Mm. What is that about? Brother Joan, what you think about this today? Brother Joan better go sit down. Mm. All right. All right. Okay. So, when one is licensed, they're permitted they're allowed to flow. Well, Pastor, how, how will I get this? Well, if you feel anybody in this room feels like they got a call to ministry, you pray. You talk to the Lord about it. And then you come tell your pastor. I'm going to say, well, won't you write me a letter? Tell me what the Lord told you. How you feel you've been called. You give me the letter. Let me take the letter. Let me take it to God. Let me pray over it. The Lord says, okay, him, go ahead and license him. All right, I'm going to license you so I can see where you are. And it's up to you if you stay licensed for the next 20 years. That's your choice. But if you want to still be entry level 20 years in, I'm going to let you be as entry level as you want to be. I ain't going to push you beyond where you want to go. But if you're saying, I'm tired of having to make sure that first lady is looking over me while I'm doing this. Then 
grow up, let God bless you, get in the Bible, get some badger skin, get some knowledge, and then pastor ordain you when God sees fit, so that you can be entrusted without messing up people's lives. That's good, sir. Right. That's good. People come to church, they already hurt. They already messed up. Okay. Then you're going to get up here with your novice self. Janky. And you're going to make janky, just janky. Then you're going to just make things worse. Mm -hmm. They came to church already mad. They left madder. Mm -hmm. They came to church upset. They left ticked off. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is that can elevate it, you did it because you're a novice. Mm -hmm. So that's why scripture says, if the man is a novice, you can't ordain him. You can license him, give him some grace, give him a little rope, let him mess up. But you can sit him down. Yeah. See, it, it's you know, right now it don't sound like much, but when you see it in action, oh yeah, mm -hmm. it's everything. Okay. <laughs> because there's a responsibility yeah. to my ability, and there's a responsibility to my authority. Right. So if I'm supposed to be the authority in the church, it's my job to make sure by God's grace that your ability isn't getting ahead of your authority. Okay. Proverbs, I mean Romans, uh, where am I going? N numbers, number 16. Number 16. Yeah, this is good. I need all 30 minutes that I got now. Number 16. We're talking about ability and authority. We then gave you some of the things that we look at in the church. And that's the flow here. That's the flow here. So if y'all see folk, they come in and they say, when they stand up, introduce themselves, and they say they want to join Bethlehem Faith Church, and we accept them as members here, and they say, I'm a minister of this, what y'all going to call them? Minister. Minister, because that's what he is. That's right. That's what he is. But he is only operating in a licensed capacity yeah. mm -hmm. until he has been proved. Pastor, how do we know he's been proven? Because you will physically see about that? his ordination. You, I ain't going to ordain him in, in back behind nobody. Folk going to know it's going to be a service where this man or this woman is being ordained. And if you have not seen this man or this woman be ordained, you know that they're not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, well, you ain't got to question it. You ain't got to consider. You ain't got to think, well, uh, is, is he? If you ain't seen it, the answer is no. All right. Number 16. Starting at verse 1. I really need to take us through verse number 40. Um, but I promise I'll try to make it interactive. I think I've done enough heavy lifting uh, so far. So maybe this would be kind of enjoyable. Since so Bartonite, you'll, you'll get with me if nobody else will. So I'm good. Here we go. Um, first thing they get with me too. Here we go. Uh, now Korah, number 16. One. Now Korah, the son of Izar, the son of Koath, the son of Levi, and Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab and On, the son of Pella, the sons of Reuben, took men. And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, ye take too much upon yourselves or upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord? And when Moses heard it, he fell on his face, and he spake unto Korah and unto all his company, saying, Even tomorrow the Lord will show who are his and who is holy, and will cause him to come near unto him. Even him who he have chosen will he cause to come near unto him. Moses says, This do, take you censures, Korah and all his company, and put fire therein, and put incense in them before the Lord tomorrow. And it shall be that the man whom the Lord doth choose, he shall be holy. Ye take too much upon you, ye sons of Levi. And Moses said unto Korah, Here I pray you, ye sons of Levi. Seemeth it but a small thing unto you, that the God of Israel have separated you from the congregation of Israel, to bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them. And he had brought thee near to him and all thy brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee and seek ye the priesthood also. Let me pause. I want to make sure we, we fully understand where we are tonight. Now, Moses and Aaron were chosen of God 
back to the book of Exodus. Okay, Moses was chosen to be the priest. He was chosen to be the leader, if you will, serve as the prophet, the man of God for the children of Israel. All right, Moses has a brother named Aaron. All right, Moses and Aaron are brothers. Well, we saw in the first verse that this man, Korah, the son of Izhar, the son of Koath. This is Moses' cousin. I'm going to help us understand the genealogy. Okay? Uh, Moses' father's name was Amram. All right? Moses' father's name was Amram. Amram's father's name was Koath. All right? So Koath, as we see Korah, the son of Izhar, the son of Koath, which means Moses and Korah had the same grandfather. Okay? Koath was the grandfather. All right? So Moses and Korah our cousins. Korah says, I'm of the tribe of Levi, because we all from the same lineage, just like you are. So since me and my folk are from the Levitical tribe, which is the tribe of priesthood, why is it that you and Aaron are doing everything, and we just come along and do a little something every now and then? Uh, they told, Korah told Moses and Aaron, y'all putting too much pressure on yourselves. Y'all making yourselves like God to us. You know, we got the same people. We're from the same family. We Levites, we holy. Why is it that we can't operate the same way Aaron is operating? Now, if you go back and look at Numbers uh, chapter 3 and chapter 4, it gives the detail of what the Kohathites, Korah and his boys, what the Kohathites' responsibility was. They were supposed to handle certain holy vessels in the tabernacle. They were supposed to handle the altar and all these other things. But God commanded that nobody but Aaron and his sons handle those, which means they, they, they were just like us. Like on Sundays, uh, we got to uh, pack up and move our stuff out. Okay, um, Same way with the Old Testament tabernacle, it was a temporary dwelling. They would set it up, they would move it. So they would have to pack everything up and set it up, leave it. So Aaron would have to go behind the scenes. And he would have to break the altar down. Mm -hmm. He would have to overlay it with blue ribbon or blue, blue cloth, cloth and then badger skin. So that nobody but Aaron and his sons could physically see what the altar looked like. All right? So Aaron had to do all this before the Kohathites, Korah and his boys, could come and move it. Korah says, why Aaron got to do all that? Mm -hmm. Why can't we break down the instruments? Why can't we break down the altar? We handle it. We already been uh, authorized. We already got the ability to handle it. Why we can't see it? But Moses says, you've got to understand, you have not been authorized in this level to see what's going on behind the scenes. Your authorization has simply been that you can handle the presence of God after it's been covered. Mm. But if you try to handle God's presence while it's not covered, you will die. Wow. So they say to Aaron, they say to Moses, man, I don't want to hear that. Because the scripture told me, the word of the Lord told me in uh, Exodus, Exodus 16 and 9, God said, you know, the children of Israel, all of us are holy. So Brother Foster, they got an attitude. Because they said, I'm just as saved as you. I got just as much right to the, the presence of God that you got. So how are you going to tell me I can't go behind the scenes and do what you're doing? You just want to be the man. You just want to be in control. So um, I ain't trying to hear from you no more. So Korah's got an attitude. He's very upset. He's going back and forth with Moses. The other two guys that were mentioned in the first verse, guys named Dathan and Abiram. Now, Dathan and Abiram were in the lineage of Reuben. All right? I uh, got to give you this, this part so you can get to understand it. Reuben was the oldest son of Jacob. Okay, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Jacob has 12 sons. Reuben is the oldest of the boys. Okay, Levi was the third oldest. Reuben was the oldest. Now, Moses' descendants were from Levi, who was the third oldest. Dathan and Abiram, who were from Reuben, were descendants of the oldest child. So their attitude was, why am I listening to Moses when my daddy is older than yours? I'm the oldest one in here. Everybody should be listening to me, not you. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I, yeah, yeah, I'm the oldest one. I'm the man. Reuben, firstborn, I'm the oldest descendant of Reuben. Everybody should follow me now. So Dathan and Abraham say, uh, Moses, we're kind of through listening to you. Uh, first of all, you took us out of Egypt where we had everything we needed. 
You brought us out here in the wilderness with a promise that you were going to take us to some promised land. We still ain't seen it. We're tired of you. We're not listening to you anymore because we're older than you. So we're looking at people here who are operating in a type of ability. First, we see Korah, uh, who has an ability because he has been anointed of God to serve uh, the priests in that capacity, just not go behind the scenes. We see Dathan and Agaram, who through their lineage are saying, because of the, the, the custom of the land is that the oldest sibling or the oldest living relative should be the one in charge of the family. They feel like, according to the law, I got more right to lead the people than you do. So we got two folks, both dealing with ability. One is against Aaron, one is against Moses. Now, he says, Moses tells him when that ninth verse he just read, he says, you're considering it a small thing that God chose you out of all your brethren to serve in the tabernacle. And now you want to challenge Aaron for the priesthood. Verse 11, for, for which cause both thou and all thy company are gathered together against the Lord. And what is Aaron that ye murmur against him? Check out what happened next, Black. Verse 12 says, And Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram, the older guys, the sons of Iliad, which says, We will not come up. Mm. We just ain't coming. Forget you, Pastor. Mm. Mm. Okay. Uh, it is, is, it, is it a small thing? Just listen how they talk to the man of God. Is it a small thing that thou hast brought us up out of a land that flowed with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness? Wow. Except thou make thyself altogether a prince over us? Moreover, thou hast not brought us into a land that flows with milk and honey or given us an inheritance of fields and vineyards. Wilt thou then put out the eyes of these men? Mm. We will not come up. So they just, they that really, I mean, they, they, like, they probably neck rolling and everything. Done. Uh, this up. And so 15 says, and Moses, who was so meek normally, was very raw. Man got hot. And said unto the Lord, respect not their offering. I have not taken one donkey from them, neither have I hurt one of them. And Moses said unto Korah, Be thou and all thy company before the Lord, thou and they and Aaron tomorrow, and take every man his censure, and put incense in them, and bring ye before the Lord every man his censure, 250 censures, thou also and Aaron, each uh, of you his censure. So, so we, got, we got Korah, who's the con convinced 250 men of Israel that he's supposed to be the next priest. Mm. He's supposed to take Aaron's job. And you got Dathan and Abiram who have caused a revolt that says, we ain't got to listen to Moses no more because we the older one. Y'all should be following us. So Moses is hot. So Moses says, you know what, God? I'm going to put you on display. You do what you do. So he told them, y'all take our Korah. You get your, your censor. You get your thing where you're going to offer your incense to the Lord. You get those 250 men that's with you. Everybody get them. Aaron going to get his, and we're going to have a showdown. Uh, verse 18, and they took every man his censure and put fire in them and laid incense thereon and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. Mm. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron saying, separate yourselves from among this congregation that I may consume them in a moment. <laughs> and they fell upon their faces. Listen to the pastor's heart. He's still going to God on behalf of these folks that's mm, trying to kill him. Mm, mm. And said, O oh God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin, and wilt thou be wroth with all the congregation? Mm. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. And Moses rose up, and went unto Dathan and Abiram, went back to these old dudes that didn't want to hear him. And the elders of Israel followed him. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all their sins. So they got up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram on every side. Mm -hmm. And Dathan and Abiram came out, they came out now, and stood in the door of their tents. Listen to this, black, mm -hmm. their wives their sons, and their little children. Mm. I, I'll come back to that in a minute. And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know the Lord have sent me to do all oh these my. works, for I have not done them of mine own hand. If these men, Sister Foster, die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord have not sent me. Mm. But if God make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth, mm. and swallow them up, 
with all that appertain unto them. All. And they get yeah, all. And they go down quick into the pit. Then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground, no, it didn't did it, that the ground clave asunder that was under them, and the earth opened her mouth mm -hmm. and swallowed them up. And their houses and all the men that appertained unto Korah and all their goods. They and all that appertained to them went down alive into the pit. Mm -hmm. And the Lord and the earth closed upon them. Yeah. And they perished from among the congregation. Wow. And all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them. They heard them cry from under the earth. For they said, lest the earth swallow us up also. Mm -hmm. And there came out a fire from the Lord. God won't finish yet. And consumed the 250 men that offered incense. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Eleazar, uh, the son of Aaron, the priest, that he take up the censers out of the burning. And scatter thou the fire yonder, for they are hollow. Don't, don't waste the gold and the silver, man. Go get that stuff about the fire. Leave their bones there, but bring the gold back. Mm -hmm. The censers of these sinners against their own souls, let them make them broad plates for a covering of the altar, for they were offered before the Lord. Therefore they are hollow, and they shall be a sign unto the children of Israel. And Eleazar the priest took the brazen censers. Wherewith they were burnt, they, wherewith they that were burnt had offered, and they were made broad plates for a covering of the altar. Verse forty to be a memorial unto the children of Israel that no stranger, which is not of the seed of Aaron, come near to offer incense before the Lord, that he be not as Korah and as his company, as the Lord said to him by the hand of Moses. Now, we see the situation here. We're talking about ability versus authority. You got a man again in Korah that has decided his ability is capable of challenging the authority of Moses. Now, the point we're making tonight is this, that when a man has truly been sent by God in authority, God will always fight for that man. Okay. Uh, when, when, when he has been sent by God and set in place to do only what God has said, God will always fight for that man. There will be those that will oppose authority. There will be those that have ability that will attempt to challenge authority. But God will always stand up for authority because God understands that the authority is operating as his mouthpiece. Mm. Now, uh, the scripture says, Moses says this. He says, listen, uh, God, I need you to show the rest of these folk that still got to follow me that I ain't doing this on my own. Mm. So he says, if these men die just because they were old, or if they die some common death, then God, you ain't really sent me. I'll pack it up, I'll go home. But if you do something you've never done before, wow. oh my. and you open the earth up wow. and swallow them, that the earth close up on them, everybody here will know that you sent me. And in the New Living Translation, the scripture says that before he stopped speaking, mm -hmm. the Bible says that God opened up the earth and these sinners against their own souls came under the ground and died while they were alive. And everything was over. And everything, this is the key. Oh, God. This, 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 is, this is the teaching point, Black. Yes, and I, I want you to hear this yes, because it, 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 at some point in time, yes, you're going to teach this. And, you know, people are going to be like, wow. You know, and just, just tell them the Lord gave you revelation. All right? Um, <laughs> then you got to tell them where it came from. All right? Um, <laughs> The scripture says something very key, and, and I want us to understand this. This, this, is, this is what happens when you really study, okay? Uh, scripture says something in verse 30, in verse 32, uh, and in verse 33. The word says appertain, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right? All right, okay. Uh, when something, Diaviana, I haven't talked to you it. tonight, so uh, let me talk to you. When something is appertained to, uh, that means something is either connected to uh, or it belongs.